I would like to also call Master Joel Minot, a student from the St. Peter Claver Primary School. Yes. Okay. I was born in one of those three countries, three villages, I should say. If we, if you really want to know the romantic history of Jamaica, you will have to study the area between Brownstone in St. Anne and Gurney's Mount in Hanover. Then you will understand the struggles and strivings of our people. You will understand the evolution that has taken place and how by hard work and integrity you, we had been able, some of us, to reach position of trust. In this village, we were by a large Christian people, and although everybody wasn't married, there was sound family life, which included the extended family. My father was not married to my mother, who had only two of us, my brother and myself. My father had children with six women, so my extended family was very big. The remarkable thing is that he had the ability to keep them all together. For instance, when I went out with his wife, she didn't regard me as my father's child. She regarded me as her child and that made it very easy. So the complexity of my family at that time never came home to me until much later in life. In this village where I was born, my mother was a seamstress and it was so, it was she who carried the rest of her family she supported her father, her mother, and two sisters, one of whom was married and had children. So I grew up in a setting where we were all together in what was known as a yard. We had one house with four bedrooms and that had to be enough for all of us. My mother was not well educated, but she belonged to a weird group of people who, who, as we say in Jamaica, turned anything she touched into gold. She was very lucky. So, when I was born, she was sewing not only her own dresses, but other people's as well. While at the time, teaching girls the skill. In those days, she sewed both women and men. Sewed for both women and men. Making pants and coats for men in the village. Naturally, that meant that she also made all the clothes I wore at that time. She wouldn't allow me to cook because in those days, if we went into the kitchen, we were known as a mama man. But, but you were allowed to do everything else. I held outside, for example, we didn't have running water and had to carry water from the well. They would pat the donkey and put what was known as the drum pan on it. When I was a very small boy, she bought me a goat and I had to take care of my goat. She bought me more goats and pigs, which I also had to care of. My adopted brother, who was older and who became a teacher himself, 
as I will tell you later, would take us into the field or into the pasture or where the grass would be above my head. When I return home in the morning to prepare for school, I would be wet, but I would dry off and go to school. So in that setting, I realized that we could only achieve the highest if we love one another. In the family, we were very, very close and loving. And with my father's children elsewhere, the remarkable thing was that we were also very close and loving. And if we bothered one, it would be a fight amongst all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jazeel. Thank you, Joel. We'll hear from Mr. Jazeel Martin, who is the head boy of St. George's College. All protocols observed, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. I will now read an excerpt from, the, um, from, from part five, entitled King's House, um, taken from chapter 14, from the cane fields to King's House, located on pages 365 to 368. Make that notation for when you get your copy. Under the subtitle, Some Reflections on a Vision for the Nation, Ms. Yvonne asks Sir Howard, I want you to speak to us about the journey since independence. The vision that the Founding Fathers had, and you yourself, as one of those who helped to carve the vision for the nation. Tell us what you thought it would become since 1962, when we decided we were going to develop a nation based on our own needs, culturally, educationally, and politically. You mentioned that this was part of God's plan for our nation because you recognized that this was a special country. How much of that do you think we have accomplished at this stage? His Excellency replies, and I quote, We have spoken about this, that our national anthem was not just an ordinary national anthem. I think it came straight from God, and the people who wrote it were just mere instruments in designing and expressing the thoughts. If you read it well and understand it, it sets out clearly what God wanted the nation to be. We hear this line, teach us true respect for all. It means that we are to respect each other and to live in such a way that we would glorify rather than denigrate. If you read the anthem very carefully, we expected God to guard us with his mighty hand and we hoped that the evil powers would not reach us. We hoped that we would produce leaders who would understand their relationship with God. We asked clearly for them to get wisdom because if you have all the wisdom and all the knowledge and you don't have the understanding to use it, you have nothing. So, we were saying to our leaders, Make sure that you get the wisdom and the knowledge, but also understand how to use them. Then we were constantly to be stirred to our duty to serve each other. That is a very important thing. In the design of that anthem, we were constantly reminded that we are not only to think of those of us who live in affluence and plenty, but we are to think of the poor and have a vision for the growth of our nation because without a vision we perish. Then we ask God for wisdom, goodness and mercy along with the knowledge in order to help us to unfold God's purpose for humanity. So, as a nation, it is our will that we should be an example to the world where people would live together and be truthful to one another, love, and inspire one another. I think we have tried, and I'm going to say something that many of my colleagues may not agree with. When we started party politics, 
the emphasis was not only on material benefits. Culturally, we were to pursue a certain course. Spiritually, we were to pursue a certain course. Unfortunately, however, the differences between parties have made people corrupt. And in disharmony with the philosophy of the founding fathers of our nation, we were to love one another. We were to respect one another. When I listen to the politicians denigrating each other, I'm distressed. Let us think of the national pledge. Before God and all mankind, I pledge the love and loyalty of my heart, the wisdom and courage of my mind, the strength and vigor of my body in the service of my fellow citizens. It is not to serve yourself.